Talk to me. Information, news, and entertainment on demand. Welcome to the Changing Stage, music gear talk from the manufacturers and musicians who define the biz. Here's your host, Florentino Buenaventura. That music means it's the Changing Stage radio show powered by the Mighty WS Radio Networks, brought to you by SIR Music Equipment Rental, where you can get your gear. If you've got a concert or show, you need to get some rental gear, you can get it from SIR Music Equipment Rental. And, of course, our great friends over at Pitbull Audio, pitbullaudio.com. They just want you to play it loud. They want you to just be out there and be musicians that you are. And this is a special edition on a Thursday morning and this is a very great honor for me today because I've got one of my heroes from the, the business here with me. Mr. Ken Cragen, are you here, sir? I sure am. It's great to be with you, Florentino. Ken, I appreciate you uh, taking time out of uh, your day, your busy day, because I know that you are a man in demand. You know, you've, uh, for those folks that may not recognize the name, you've recognized his work because he has worked with some of the greatest names in the business, Lionel Richie. Kenny Rogers, uh, Lindsey Buckingham from uh, from Fleetwood Mac. I mean, the list goes on. Burt Reynolds, actors, comedians like Louis Anderson. So, I mean, it's just a, an amazing array of people that you've worked with. You've done some very cool altruistic uh, endeavors, which we're going to talk about in the third uh, segment. But uh, just kind of, you know, a little bit on that. That's We Are the World, Live Aid, which everyone has been touched by. So you're... You're a living legend, sir. <laughs> well, I've had a good career and a lot of fun, and I'm still doing it. I got about eight projects on my plate at the moment. I'm, I'm just having a blast. Keep working and having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, we all have a start somewhere, and and you started uh, going way back to to your days in Berkeley. I'd like to kind of fill us in a little bit on your your history and how you kind of got started in the music business and some of the, the twists and turns, some of the artists that you kind of uh, helped groom along the way in the, in, the, in the first starts to kind of give our audience who are people in the business that are, you know, making their way and and, and trying to navigate this crazy, uh, uh, you know, uh, business that we are, we're in right now. So how did you get started, sir? Well, you know, I, I teach a class at UCLA called Stardom Strategies for Musicians, and I always tell my students everything that happens in life is an opportunity, even the negative things, everything that happens in life is an opportunity. And if I look back on my career, you know, the start really was that we moved away from Los Angeles where I was living. At the age of 15, my dad decided, um, my, uh, me being 15, my dad decided to take um, – work as a teacher at UC Berkeley in, in Berkeley, California. And uh, we moved up there. And in Los Angeles, I'd been going to dances and shows and stuff because so many of the entertainers were down here. And when I got to Berkeley, they nobody did anything like that. And I got in a club there, and I st- suddenly started staging dances big. Dan- I just took the idea from Los Angeles. As much as the move was kind of you know, tearing up roots and leaving my friends and everything. When I got to Berkeley, I, I had knowledge of how to do something that nobody up there really knew how to do. And I got that reputation, and it carried over into college. And in college, I started producing concerts with the emerging folk scene, the, the folk groups, uh, uh, starting really with, uh, uh, well, at that particular time, there was a group called the Gateway Singers. There was a group, uh, the Weavers, out of the East Coast and so on. A lot, of, a lot of acts that people wouldn't probably remember now, but they were the legends in the folk area. And um, I started producing shows and, and uh, met a group uh, that called the Limeliners. And, uh, and also at that point, actually produced the first two con- concerts for a group called the Kingston Trio, who went on to be the hottest group in America in the uh, late 60s. And, um, and so I sort of got into it that way. And yet again, you know, my, I got accepted to Harvard Business School, and my dad, uh, my dad said, "You better go. If you don't go now, you're never going to complete that education." So I gave up the opportunity to work. Actually, Kingston Tree had offered me a job, and I and I went off to Harvard and thought, you know, I'm at Harvard. By the way, first day I'm at Harvard, a kid comes in my room and says, "Have you heard this song by the Kingston Tree?" Tom Dooley. It's the number one wrong song in the country, and I thought, "Oh my God, my career's past." 
me by. <laughs> but, you know, I was very fortunate. I, I uh, came back at between the two semester or years, actually, and uh, met this group called the Limelighters, and they asked me to be their executive secretary. And I think probably in my entire life, the guttiest thing I ever did was tell them, no, I don't want to be an executive secretary at this point. Uh, I, I didn't go to Harvard Business School to do that. If you want a manager, call me. Sure enough, they called me, and I ended up managing the group and managing really to be the number two group on RCA behind uh, Elvis Presley. Wow. In the early, that was the early 60s, you know. Yeah, and uh, you've went on from there. You had a number of different artists, uh, and obviously it's been, been great. Who were some of the artists that you worked with from that particular point on? Well, the day that the Lime Letters broke up, I signed this comic duo that I knew really well from the San Francisco scene called the Smothers Brothers, uh, and I had a run with them over the next eight years that was pretty amazing. Um, uh, we really, through the 60s there, became they became one of the hottest acts out there, and we ended up with the number one television show. We actually knocked a show called Bonanza off the air, uh, not off the air, but out of number one. Nobody could do that with the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, and it was a groundbreaking show that poked uh, fun at a lot of things that weren't considered uh, that you couldn't do on network, and we, we protested the Vietnam War with humor and, and a lot of uh, guests. We had Pete Seeger on when he had been banned from television for years. We had... Uh, all the big rock acts. We had the Who on. We had, you know, every big act pr pretty much came on our show. We were really set the stage for a lot of what was done subsequently and, and opened doors for things because this was network television. Yeah, yeah. You know, those days there were only three net three networks, and uh, suddenly we were dominating the airways with a with a show and really a show that was had only a small amount of controversy in it but uh, just enough to uh, eventually get it kicked off the air. Yeah, well, and you had a few uh, uh, um, of the players that came out of that, obviously. Uh, probably the biggest one was Goldie Hawn, so that was pretty amazing. Goldie Hawn actually came from uh, a show that we, help, that we really helped, um, uh, and I'm blanking now on the name of it. That's terrible of me, but a different show, but um, one um, that... Um, uh, you know, Goldie, that was Goldie's biggest thing. Out of the Smothers Brothers show, there were a lot of acts that emerged, really, uh, and particularly individuals. Uh, there, you know, Rob Reiner was a writer on that show. Uh, oh, yeah. Steve Martin was a writer on our show. Um, we had we had people emerge out of our show who went on to tremendous careers, careers that still are very very prominent today. So we were very groundbreaking in that. And and the, the show I couldn't think of was laughing. Your your I'm sure your yeah. audience will be familiar with that. And Goldie came out of that. I I was very fortunate uh, to see the very first the pilot for Laughing before it ever went on the air, and I knew that uh, they really had something there that it was going to be a. A spectacular show, and it, it when we went, we got knocked off the air because of our politics. But that show went on to last several years and, and break a, lot, a number of big people. And they always uh, credit us for um, for breaking ground and opening the door for them. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Now, when you were in uh, Harvard Business School, was it your thought you were going to get back into the music business, or was it one of those things where you were going to go into another area and you just kind of moved right back into it uh, through circumstances? No, you know, not at all. I, I, when I went to Harvard, I thought I'd get up, end up in the advertising business, and I actually worked part-time while I was in Boston for BBDNO, the big advertising agency. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a huge one. one. At the time, it was a pretty dull job, you know, putting stuff in scrapbooks and going out and doing surveys and stuff, but at least I was working for one of the big agencies, and, uh, you know, I, I thought that's what's going to be my direction. And, and when I came out of Harvard Business School, after telling this group, the Limelighters, that I would, that I would go to work for as their manager, um, I, I had offers from Time Magazine, uh, from Procter & Gamble, uh, probably, I think, from BBDNO. I'm a little vague on that one. But in any event, I turned all of that stuff down and, and went out to manage a group and, you know, made very, very little that first year. But boy, by the second year, I probably made more money than my dad had ever made in a year in his life. <laughs> um, you know, it was funny, you know, you can't imagine it now, but the top guy 
leaving Harvard Business School that year was making $12,500 a year. <laughs> it shows you what's happened in that period of time. Today it's probably, you know, seventy five to 100000 a year. It shows you the, just the inflation that's, that's happened in that time. But I remember I made 8000 my first year and 35000 my second year. By my second year, I was probably making more than anybody I'd graduated with. But I wasn't about money. I never have been about money. It was never the money that drove me, and it was never the money that uh, that I was looking for. It just came because I went out and was passionate and excited, having a great time on the road with a group, managing the group, doing everything for them, you know, yeah. booking the flights, getting the laundry cleaned, uh, uh, doing, you know, even, even had a, a line in their show where I had, you know, they asked for things from the audience and I there was always a you know I was always kind of a shill there giving a, a, a standard line that would get a funny response and stuff <laughs> like that I mean I, I got to do everything and be on the road the whole time I was single or just out of college and uh, it, I, you know I have to think of those days in some ways as uh, the most fun of my life wow that 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 is amazing because uh, you know it, the, the business has changed so much. We're going to be talking about that here in the next few seconds. Uh, we are going to a commercial break. This is the Changing Stage Radio Show, powered by the Mighty WS Radio Networks and brought to you by SIR Music Equipment Rental and Pitbull Audio, pitbullaudio.com. We're here with just a remarkable Ken Cragen. We'll be right back in a few short minutes. We're going to take a pause for the cause. Stay tuned. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Thank you for listening to WS Radio. Improve your business and your life with useful information from experts and thought leaders. WS Radio is radio with ROI. You may have heard me brag about Progressive Medical Center and just how much they've helped me with my health. And Dr. Goley, one thing that you've helped so many people with is migraines. Unfortunately, there are millions and millions of Americans who are suffering with migraines and headaches, and they're debilitating because it affects the quality of their life, and they cannot function properly. At Progressive, we get to the root cause because we understand that migraines could be caused by nutritional deficiencies, hormonal imbalances, believe it or not, delayed food sensitivities. And once we determine what the real reason is, we put a plan of action together with medication that we get them off slowly and we put them on an all-natural approach and the results are amazing. Incredible. I mean, there's so many people that can say they don't live their lives with migraines anymore thanks to Progressive Medical Center. And that's what's exciting and rewarding to us as physicians because we help our patients take control of their health and that's why they're living well. Why don't you get a hold of Progressive Medical Center today? Don't live in pain. Don't have migraines anymore. Just go to their website, ProgressiveMedicalCenter.com. This is your life. Live it well. In the military, things can change in an instant. The Navy Mutual Aid Association, we understand because it's our life too. That's why our dedication to serving the life insurance needs of our military veterans and their families is unrivaled. Navy Mutual offers superior life insurance protection without military service restrictions and limitations. A single focus on providing the peace of mind military families are looking for. That's what we do. Navy Mutual, ensuring those who serve. Call 800-628-6011 or go to NavyMutual.org. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, CM founder of VinVillage.com and the Wine and Dine Show on Vin Village Radio. Do you have a wine, event, product, or service to promote? Then contact VinVillage.com to reach thousands of wine lovers across the country. Vin Village connects like-minded wine enthusiasts with unique and exclusive wines, events, products, and services. To learn more, contact us on VinVillage.com. Vin Village is where wine lovers connect. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, VinVillage.com, where wine lovers connect. Be sure to tune in weekly to Vin Village Radio for exclusive, in-depth interviews with the who's who in wine and food. Talk to me. Information, news, and entertainment on demand. Welcome to the 
the changing stage. Music gear talk from the manufacturers and musicians who define the biz. Here's your host, Florentino Buenaventura. This is the second segment of the Changing Stage radio show powered by WS Radio Networks, the worldwide leader in Internet talk radio. And we are brought to you by SIR Music Equipment Rental, where you can get your gear if you need to rent some gear, as well as PitbullAudio.com where they just want you to play it loud. And if you're here in San Diego, you could always go down to the store in National City or go to pitbullaudio.com to get the best prices for the best gear. And we are back with Mr. Ken Cragen. You back with us, Ken? Yeah, I'm right here. Awesome, sir. So we were t- just talking a little bit about your early history, and obviously you've had this vast wealth of experience and and, and working with some, some great folks. Uh, tell us a few stories from, from uh, your, your all the great things that have happened. Uh, you know, you've you've done things with everybody from Michael Jackson to obviously a lot of your great artists uh, that you've you've been uh, had on your roster. So let's get a couple of the cool stories that that uh, come to your mind. You know, as we were going out of the last segment, I mentioned the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, and the, and Tommy Smothers, the comedian, and the of the two of them, Dick was always a straight man taught me something during those days that if you were the personal manager, you pretty much controlled the role you could play in any project that your artist did. And if you manage major artists, that could mean television shows and movies and, you know, all kinds of other projects. And I ended up very fortunately with the clients I had uh, and the ability to, to help them become superstars with these roles that opened doors for me where I ended up producing so many different shows and, and things. And, and in those early days, the early Smothers Brothers days, because we had the hottest show on television, we were exposed to a lot of different opportunities. And one of them was a lawyer who called me six times, six different weeks in a row, saying, you've got to go see this group at a little club owned by the leader of the New Christie Minstrels, a club called Ledbetters in Westwood here in, near UCLA. I finally went down, and it turned out to be the group, the first edition, uh, from which yeah. came Kenny Rogers. Yes. And uh, we put them right away on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour show. They broke out big, um, had many hits over the next several years, were renamed Kenny Rogers in the first edition because he was the lead singer on almost all the hit records. And, you know, Ruby Don't Take Your Love to Town, uh, um, you know, what just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in, song after song after song. In fact, it got named Kenny Rogers in the first edition when they had two records approaching the top ten, and the record company wanted to differentiate between them, so they called one of them Kenny Rogers in the first edition, and the other one simply the first edition. And the one with the Kenny Rogers title became one of their biggest hits, and the title stuck, and, and so... You know, then that group broke up. They broke up in the mid uh, 1970s, and Kenny uh, started into a solo career. Not very successful in the beginning. Uh, went to Nashville, got a manager who was selling him kind of a bill of goods. Came back, uh, sort of with his tail between his legs, to me. And by that time, I'd gone to work for a big time manager named uh, Jerry Weintraub, who had yeah. John Denver and Bob Dylan and John Davidson, who was big at the time, and. And um, just one big artist after another. So um, I was working there. Jerry didn't feel we should take Kenny on. He thought he was washed up, but I insisted, sort of fought it and signed him anyway. And, boy, the rest is history. I mean, we just began having one success after another in that, in that period. And after a while, I broke away from Jerry and formed my own company and took one other, one or two other clients with me, particularly Harry Chapin. And, and, and that probably changed my life, Harry Chapin. Yeah, amazing. Because, um, I, yeah, I don't know how many people will remember Cats in the Cradle or uh, WOLD or Taxi or all the big Harry Chapin hits of the late 70s, but Harry Chapin was most importantly probably the number one humanitarian in the in the music business. And he fought, he did so many benefit concerts. He he fought for against poverty and hunger and 
homelessness and everything. And he was really my inspiration when later on I did We Are the World, Hitch Cross American Live Aid and all of those. Harry really taught me that important point, um, you know, that that we could do a lot of good and still, still do well. And unfortunately, Harry was killed in uh, the one real tragedy and career-wise for me was Harry's death in 1981 in an uh, accident on the Long Island Expressway. But you know what happened when Harry died? Kenny picked up the torch that fallen with Harry and carried it forward, and we did all kinds of incredible things through the 80s, not just We Are the World, but uh, huge things in the areas of hunger and homelessness, uh, both here and abroad. So it kind of led to that. Um, you know, I had just one great experience with clients after another. I mean, so many fun clients in those early 1980s. I had Lindsey Buckingham and Kim Carnes and uh, Lionel Richie and Kenny Rogers and uh, later Olivia Newton-John and the Bee Gees and Burt Reynolds. But, you know, there was a point, I think, 1982, I had 41% of the top 10 records in America were my clients wow. for the year. <laughs> that is amazing. And you still had time to go out there and change the world. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, man. That's, that's, that is that's great. You, you know what? I, I was looking at the sizzle reel and some of the things that uh, you were saying there, and I, I found a lot of that to be so true. I kind of want to jump ships a little bit because you mentioned passion earlier on in the first segment. And I've seen passion, commitment, and focus being three of the keys to being successful. And it sounds like that's been the case for you. And you've got this rule of threes, you know, that obviously applies more to uh, interaction, but uh, uh, can you kind of expand on, on that thought, this rule of threes and your, your, your yeah, dedication? And actually, the origin of that, Florentino, goes back to the Smothers Brothers. I, when I was re- starting to teach at UCLA, I reviewed my career and looked at the successes and the failures and realized way back that when the Smothers Brothers did three television shows, big major network shows, in one week by just sort of an accident that it happened that way, that it completely changed their career, moved their career up to a whole new level, and they broke out from that. And then I began to examine through, and I realized there was a magic to the number three in every way. I mean, from the Holy Trinity, the three wise men, to three strikes and you're out, to the you know, the, the three beats and a joke. <laughs> recently, recently, the astronomy community just determined that there's a law of threes in the in the universe. But where I use it and where it's been a very effective is I figured out that you can't sell anything to anybody unless you get their attention. And to get somebody's attention in the sea of noise that we're experiencing today with all the different things that impinge on us, that you needed at least three impressions in a concentrated period of time. And what that comes down to for your listeners and anybody who wants to apply this is you take one central thing that's happening or one central thing that you're trying to accomplish and you build around it with other things that are going on. If you have something now uh, that's happening, you slow it down so it happens right around that central thing. You take things from the future and you and you bring them back uh, so that they can happen. You concentrate everything in a you know day, a week, a month at the absolute most. Even a month is almost too long. You want thing. You want people to get multiple impressions in a concentrated period of time, and that's the only way today that you get people to take actual action. And, and I'll give you, if, if we've got time, I'll give you the best example. Well, we got time for you, work. sir. We got time for you. Well, Go right ahead. Yeah. Uh, the the best example that really brings it home is Lionel Richie at the Olympics in 1984. Mm-hmm. I didn't put anything around that. We were so concentrated. I hadn't taught the, the course yet, so I hadn't really examined or learned the magic of threes. And we had Lionel Richie did all night long at the Olympics and something like, I don't know, billions of people on television literally saw him perform the closing number of the Olympics all night long. Mm-hmm. And it didn't advance his career at all. And I know because I was his manager at that yeah. point. And there was no extra heat on his career. And why? Because it was an isolated event. We had no record coming out at that time. We had no press around it. We had, no, uh, we had nothing else going on around that. But six months later... 
He hosts the American Music Awards. He wins six American Music Awards. He's on the cover of TV Guide, which at the time was the biggest magazine in the country. He uh, That week, he's on the cover of TV Guide. He writes We Are the World with Michael Jackson. We record it the night of the American Music Awards. There's press conferences the next week. Now, I will tell you that if you add up the number of people who saw or heard that those particular things, it would not come close to the number of people that saw Lionel Richie on the Olympics six months before. And yet, because of multiple impressions in a concentrated period of time, it, Lionel Richie's career exploded. And it, it had all to do with the, with the frequency in that extremely concentrated period. Oh, he even went on in that period to the, to the Grammys and won three Grammys and performed on the Grammys about a month later. Everything was happening in this concentrated period of time, and it exploded, and it worked. And that is that's uh, that's amazing because I think that really applies to a lot of the the, the people that are are here trying to find a well that are listening in that are trying to find a way to uh, rise above this noise that are, that's going on in the music business because as things become more democratic, it becomes harder to get recognized. So I think that's a, that's a, a really kind of a, a key message for them. We're going to be taking a short commercial break, and we're going to be coming back here in, in a few minutes. This is the Changing Stage radio show, powered by the Mighty WS Radio Networks and brought to you by SAR Music Equipment Rental and Pitbull Audio at pitbullaudio.com. We're here with, again, the remarkable Ken Craig, and we've got a couple more segments. Stay tuned because we're going to be touching on altruism in the music business as well as the state of this business here in the fourth segment take care we'll be right back are you serious about your music are you ready to run with the big dogs the experts at pitbull audio have the gear to get you into the game from leading manufacturers like mesa boogie fender pioneer and american audio to sound your best you need the best pitbull audio can deliver in rehearsal on stage and into the big time Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. On the Internet, your business's reputation can be unjustly destroyed in an instant. Don't wait for that to happen. Building and marketing your five-star reputation can increase your business by as much as 19%. Take control of your reputation and have the five-star reputation you deserve with Reputation Marketing Solutions by DSI Development. Become the go-to company by visiting 5starrepmarketing.com. The number 5, star, rep, marketing.com. Has your business been appified? Are you tired of doing marketing that doesn't deliver results? Mobile apps build loyalty and quality retention. Your app from UPG Mobile puts your business on their mind and at their fingertips. UPG Mobile will give you a custom app highlighting how you are unique, targeting your message, and improving your open rates. Appify your business and amplify your presence with your customers at upgmobilemarketinggroup.com. You've heard me bragging about Progressive Medical Center and how they've helped me feel so much healthier. But one thing, Dr. Agoli, that a lot of people come to you with is just unexplained pain. They just can't get any relief. Why can Progressive Medical Center's Pain Management Center help them? First of all, we have to acknowledge that pain is for real and you've got acute pain and chronic pain. Here's the problem. That acute pain turns to chronic, which is longstanding, and no one's getting to the root cause. There's several key diagnostic components that help us get to the root of what's causing this pain. Is it inflammation? Once we do a thorough evaluation to get the root cause determined if it's structural or if it's a metabolic issue. And this way, we put an individualized program for pain management involving correcting the spine, using certain injections when necessary, and we get our patients out of pain quicker and they stay out of pain because we teach them how to live their life well. Don't let yourself live in pain any longer. Get a hold of Progressive Medical Center today at ProgressiveMedicalCenter.com. Progressive Medical, this is your life, live it well. This is Bill Gruber with BizVid Communications, a Southern California video production leader. We've been honored to sponsor, produce, write, and host many of the fine programs on WS Radio over the years. So we understand how important the Internet and your website exposure are. As video producers, we know the tricks and secrets to incorporate video to increase your search engine optimization and business success. Visit BizVidCommunications.com to see what we can do for you. B-I-Z-V-I-D Communications.com. Talk to me. 
Information, news, and entertainment on demand. Welcome to the Changing Stage, music gear talk from the manufacturers and musicians who define the biz. Here's your host, Florentino Buenaventura. We are the children. That's right. This is the Changing Stage Radio Show, powered by the Mighty WS Radio Networks. And we are the world, and we are the children, and that is all thanks to a, a gentleman, Ken Cragen. You there with us, sir? Yeah, I'm right here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's the 30th anniversary of We Are the World. Yeah, yeah. Um, January 28th of this year was 30 years ago that we did it, hard to believe. Um, April 5th, I think it was, was the, well, the... March 5th, no, is when it was first released. And then uh, the first part of April, actually, on Good Friday that year, um, 8,000 radio stations played it simultaneously all over the U.S. and several outside the U.S. You know, so there, and then, of course, we went on that year to do Live Aid in the summer. But we are the world's uh, 30th year. That's quite a significant time. That is, that is. And, you know, what what's remarkable to me is that, you know, the business has not necessarily been known as a altruistic or, you know, philanthropic uh, type of industry. It's usually, you know, thought of as being, you know, a little bit self-centered, a little bit, you know, self-serving, and managers haven't always had the best reputation. But you, sir, have, and this is why you're my idol, you've made a difference in the way business is conducted as well as the way you've given back. So this segment, I'd really like to touch on that and how, you know, you know, you can still be successful and have a heart to do the right thing and do good. And you know, where did that come from? What was what was the inspiration to to start driving all these different things? We are the world, uh, hands across America, hands across California. I think is another one that's coming up. You know, where did you get the the the, the passion to do all this? Well, you know, I think it started with my mom, who was one of the most giving people I ever knew. In fact, one time she started crying when I told her she had to think more of herself and not always of other people. But she was a volunteer at the hospital, and she did all kinds of other things uh, around the university where my dad taught and everything, taking care of students that were from from overseas and making them feel at home and so on. And I think I got it. The quali- that quality came from just watching her example. But then Harry Chapin certainly, as we talked about earlier, uh, was a huge influence. And I will tell you that as much as I would like to say that everything we did in those days was purely altruistic, I also discovered very early on that it was really a good thing for artists to find a cause they believed in. They had a logical reason for supporting, and then to really make that a part of the career plan program. And and I think a lot of artists today do that, but I would always teach my artists, and there were several reasons for it. I would say... Find something that you relate to. In Kenny Rogers' case, he grew up in poverty in Houston, Texas, mm-hmm. living in a in the Houston housing project. Sometimes even not even having a house. Eight brothers and sisters, and and all living in very often one room if they had a place to live. And um, and so he had the whole issue of hunger and homelessness and poverty uh, really in his life, and something he could relate to. So we made that his cause. And it served the purpose not only of giving him, uh, you know, something that people could see uh, uh, what kind of person he was, but it also allowed me to take the hundreds, and I mean hundreds, of requests for him to do charity work or to contribute money to charities and, and cut them down by saying, listen, his focus is on this issue, and if it has to do with this issue, we'll look at it carefully. Otherwise... We can't at this point. We just simply can't uh, get 
uh, involved because you you're overwhelmed. The stars. I mean, I once heard Oprah. Oprah Winfrey was getting a thousand requests a day for charity for charity work. Um, you know, we were getting literally. I can remember days where I got seventy five requests in a day for Kenny Rogers or a Lionel Richie. I just imagine if you're trying to do business and run a career and manage a bunch of artists, how do you handle seventy five requests? And this is, by the way, this is pre internet. Yeah, I mean uh, now uh, nowadays, uh, you know, it's unbelievable. So, I'm very sympathetic to artists today who get inundated by this, and I know because I often take projects to artists now how overwhelmed they are with the things they're asked to do. But it is an important part of a career to find ways to give back, and it it resonates with your fans and your and the public, and it just is good karma. It, you know, uh, Tony Robbins and I have been working on a book called Doing Well by Doing Good. Um, there, You know, cause-related marketing is not really limited to corporations who see it, you know, as a way to promote business. Uh, it, it, from an artist standpoint, I think it has to be an integral part of any artist's career from the very beginning. And that is, that's awesome. I think that's a very key point. And, and like you mentioned, we should always strive to do something bigger than ourselves. And I, I think that's, that's a, a big important part. And w- with that said, as you, as you are uh, looking at these artists, uh, one of the things we just had this past weekend down here is a, a, an event called cancer stock. There's a gentleman named doc James who has been good friends with Joni Mitchell, with uh, James Taylor and a number of the folks. He started out as a uh, uh, pretty much in, behind uh, backstage at the Fillmore. So, I mean, you probably know that pretty well over in San Francisco with Bill Graham. Yeah. And uh, he, he has cancer. Uh, he's been able to beat four of the, the cancers. He still has a fifth one that's challenging him. And they started doing a cancer stock, uh, uh, basically a, a big festival they had uh, this past weekend for um, fighting not just cancer, but cancer in children, fighting that, you know, the, that disease because of 4% of, the, uh, uh, of all the funds by the government is dedicated to, it's only 4% dedicated to, to cancers with children. So they're trying to drive awareness with that. Now, here's an issue, here's, uh, uh, an issue that they're taking on, but they, they want to now take it on a, on a national level uh, at some point. They're going to go with California first. They're going to go to national level uh, at some point. What would you say... You know, obviously, there's, there is huge challenges they would be facing with something like that. You get gathered 45 of the top artists in, in the world together in one room, you know, uh, one night. So that I, that was a huge challenge. What kind of advice would you give to this group uh, that is out there promoting cancer stock? Uh, uh, and you know, what would you say for them to uh, to you know some steps that that would help them? Well, it's interesting, you know, in my classes at UCLA and in every, I do a lot of corporate lecturing, and I always, I have this point at which I say, look, you can't sell anybody on anything unless you get their attention, and to do that, it's got to be unique or special, it's got to have real substance to it, which obviously this cause does, and it's got to be unexpected, and on the word unexpected, literally the UCLA marching band marches right through the room playing like crazy. Yeah. And when they leave, I say basically, look, you know, where is your version of a UCLA marching band? Any, your version of the marching band and everything you do. Where is the wow factor? Why is anybody going to pay attention to you at this point? What, what, you know, is going to happen that somebody's going to say, okay, I'm going to take action, I'm going to contribute, I'm going to participate, I'm going to volunteer, whatever they, they want them to do. So the biggest piece of advice is what can we find that you can do here that that gets people's attention to the to whatever you're trying to do, in this case, the cancer uh, fundraising and the, and the effort there. And, um, and, and that is just absolutely critical to the piece. Uh, and, and, and it's finding that wow factor. What is different about that? You know, people come to me. We were talking about We Are the World a little bit ago here. People come to me all the time wanting to redo something like We Are the World or wanting to restage Hands Across America or whatever. You, you, I don't go back. I say to people, look, find something new and unique, something that has got is big enough that people think, oh, my God, how are they going to accomplish that? 
uh, something that can go viral in today's you know marketplace. Find something that is special about it, because there are lots of people, lots of causes out there, lots of people trying to raise money for cancer, for example. Lots of them, lots of organizations and everything. How do you stand out? How do you separate yourself? And that takes some real creative work. But you must find that if you're going to be successful. Yeah, and, I, and that that's so true. I, you know, when you think about anything that's been, uh, you know, uh, that comes to mind, it's, there's a uniqueness, and, and like you said, there's a substance to it all. We've got about a minute left. What's the one story from uh, you know, We Are the World that kind of sticks out in organizing all these these great talents in one room for a, a huge Probably, probably a good lesson, uh, Florentino, probably a good lesson uh, coming from a quote by uh, the writer Thornton Wilder where he said, every great thing balances at all times on the razor edge of disaster. <laughs> and the reality is every big thing I've ever done has had that moment where you could throw in the towel and say, forget it, we're not going to do it or whatever. And in this particular case, you know, we recorded on the night out of the American Music Awards, but the night before at the rehearsal, uh, it, one of the managers of one of the biggest artists, came, a rock artist, came to me and said, look, the rockers don't like the song. They think it's way too pop. And they don't want to stand on the stage next to the non-rockers. Lionel Richie had a line, you are who you hug. And the rockers felt that if they somehow were seen hugging the pop artists, that would somehow diminish their credibility uh, or their hipness. And so he said, we're going to leave. You know? Hey, and hey, they Ken, went off. The- I hate to cut you yeah, short. Go yeah, yeah, we yeah, got to go commercial break. This is the Changing Stage Radio Show, powered by WS Radio Networks. We're going to come back to that thought because that's an important one. We'll be right back. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. On the Internet, your business's reputation can be unjustly destroyed in an instant. Don't wait for that to happen. Building and marketing your five-star reputation can increase your business by as much as 19%. Take control of your reputation and have the five-star reputation you deserve with Reputation Marketing Solutions by DSI Development. Become the go-to company by visiting 5starrepmarketing.com. The number 5starrepmarketing.com. I raised $8,000 to build schools for South African children. After realizing how many people go hungry in San Diego, I now volunteer at a food pantry. I'm spending the next year doing volunteer projects across three countries and helping in ways they designate to be the most helpful. The World Link program at the Joan B. Kroc Institute for Peace and Justice recognizes the potential of youth as agents of social change. Learn how you can help youth become a generation of leaders in action at peace.sandiego.edu. You've heard me bragging about Progressive Medical Center and how they've helped me feel so much healthier. But one thing, Dr. Agoli, that a lot of people come to you with is just unexplained pain. They just can't get any relief. Why can Progressive Medical Center's Pain Management Center help them? First of all, we have to acknowledge that pain is for real and you've got acute pain and chronic pain. Here's the problem. That acute pain turns to chronic, which is longstanding, and no one's getting to the root cause. There's several key diagnostic components that help us get to the root of what's causing this pain. Is it inflammation? Once we do a thorough evaluation to get the root cause determine if it's structural or if it's a metabolic issue. And this way, we put an individualized program for pain management involving correcting the spine, using certain injections when necessary, and we get our patients out of pain quicker and they stay out of pain because we teach them how to live their life well. Don't let yourself live in pain any longer. Get a hold of Progressive Medical Center today at ProgressiveMedicalCenter.com. Progressive Medical, this is your life, live it well. 
Which sandwich is healthy and tasty? Which sandwich can come on bread or in a bowl? Which sandwich comes 51 different ways so it's always your way? A which which sandwich? Stop into our shop in Hazard Center. We're upstairs from the Hazard Center Digiplex. Bring in your movie ticket. We will add a free drink and chips to your sandwich order. Or order online at whichwhich.com and we will have it ready and waiting. W-H-I-C-H-W-I-C-H. Whichwhich.com. Talk to me. Information, news, and entertainment on demand. WSRadio.com. Welcome to the Changing Stage. Music gear talk from the manufacturers and musicians who define the biz. Here's your host, Florentino Buenaventura. Yeah, this is the fourth segment of the Changing Stage radio show powered by the mighty WS Radio Networks, the worldwide leader in internet talk radio and brought to you by SARI Music Equipment Rental and Pitbull Audio at pitbullaudio.com. And we are here with the incredible Ken Cragen. And we were just finishing up a thought, Ken, on that uh, moment that uh, you were you were talking about in the, the studio with that the, the managers and the uh, rockers hugging the pop guys. Yeah, just to briefly cap, recap, if somebody uh, just came on, uh, basically it was the night before we were going to record We Are the World, and one of the major managers came to me and said uh, the rockers were going to going to leave. They weren't going to be there the next that next night uh, to record the song because they didn't want to stand on the stage with the <laughs> non rockers, and they weren't didn't like the song that much. It, you know, it was a Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie pop song, and yeah. it wasn't uh, what they liked. So they went to Bruce Springsteen. This is the great part of the story. They go to Springsteen. They say, we're leaving. And Springsteen's the biggest rocker of them all, particularly then. The boss was yeah, truly was the hottest rocker there was. And he, Springsteen's answer, as it was told to me, was, look, I'm not going anywhere. I came out here to save lives and feed people. I'm not going anywhere. Well, they all would have looked pretty dumb. If, and I don't know which group of rockers were going to leave, but other than the one that this particular manager represented. But in any event, he said, I'm staying, and they all stayed, and they were all there the next night. And it was a great lesson because, you know, there is that moment where things can, you know, everything can go wrong. Maybe you can decide not to go ahead with something. And, uh, you know, I just stood firm. I said, we're recording the next night with or without you guys. And sure enough, they were there, and I'm sure they don't regret being there. It turned out to be a phenomenal um, moment that really did incredible good in the world. Yeah, yeah. And you know what, you know, uh, we talked a little earlier, you're going to be receiving a a, a, a huge uh, award from the uh, National Conference of Personal Managers, which all these things we've been talking about is part of that. You're going to be uh, uh, inducted into the Personal Manager Hall of Fame. Uh, when did you find out about this? I just found out about the two weeks ago. It happens next week uh, at Morongo Casino out in Palm Springs. And uh, it's quite a – the big thing about the honor is that, it, it, you know, they've, they've created this uh, Personal Managers Hall of Fame, and the initial inductees into it are some real legends in our business, Bernie Brillstein, who managed everybody from Saturday Night Live and many other key clients, and uh, Chef Gordon – uh, the very famous man, they just did a documentary on his life, uh, fascinating uh, major manager, uh, uh, Jack Rollins, and uh, his uh, now deceased partner, Charlie Jaffe, who managed and produced uh, all the Woody Allen films. Um, you know, a whole group of people like that. Uh, I just said the big thrill for me is not so much being inducted into the Hall of Fame, it's being one of those that's alive to actually <laughs> accept it. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, hey, Brett, if, if anybody's alive, man, it's you. Uh, you're out. All you know, we met over at uh, uh, Freddie's uh, Freddie Ravel's concert, folks. I'm sorry, I was just going to say Freddie, but uh, Freddie right. Ravel's concert, and you know, you were out having a good time. At you know, vibrato, yeah, over at vibrato, and uh, actually, we we uh, you know, I, I met a few folks that came out of the, that that uh, show. Freddie's awesome. He introduced me to Michael O'Neill, his guitar player, who Michael came down and played with us, and Brian Auger, we just had on uh, last week. So that was that was a pretty productive. So uh, Freddie came to my class. He's one of the many incredible guests that I've had at my class at UCLA. I've had Quincy Jones and Lionel Richie and, and David Foster and Herb Alpert and his wife and people like that. Yeah. But Freddie came uh, recently with his group and played for everybody. Wow. And just was tremendous. The he then sat and talked to the students. I have 140 something students there at the UCLA. It's the Herb Alpert School of Music, actually. Oh, okay. and uh, I went Freddie to was tremendous. I went to UCLA's extension program uh, back in the 80s. I'm giving up my my age right now. So yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's... I'm getting to teach undergraduate now, which is great. I taught extension for eight years, and I kept telling them I wanted to reach these the kids when they were younger. Yeah, because I teach them. You know, I teach them your career is not your life. Your career is one of the tools you use for the best life possible. Let's figure out what we're going to do to what your the key things that you're passionate about that fulfill your life goals, and then let's design a career to service your life. And that's the whole point of my class. Yeah, and you've uh, you've, you've got the class, which I suggest if you're in the, the Southern California. You know, even going into the, you know the, the the west coast of Nevada and any of the other states that touch us here, you got to make that class. And then, if you can't do that, you've got a book, uh, "Life Is a Contact Sport." Uh, that is one that uh, they can you know tell us a little bit about the book. They can they can buy it. The wild part is that book's been out for a while, even though the points in it are still very good. But the you can buy it for now for a penny on Amazon.com, <laughs> but then they charge you $5 for shipping and handling, so that's the way they make their money. But you can buy it very cheaply, certainly cheaper than you can buy it on my website, and I, I have so few of them left, I'd rather not sell them. Uh, but uh, but uh, people can go to Amazon.com and get it, and it, it does have much of what we talked about today in it, along with uh, lots of other things. It's 10 career strategies that work, so... It's certainly good for anybody, not just musicians, but anybody in any any career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that said, we've got about two minutes and 50 seconds, and you've touched on so many key elements for someone in this business, or in any business for that matter, to be successful. What are some other things through this? I mean, the industry is just kind of upside down right now. I always bring this up. It was pretty obvious, but not always easy to get a record deal in this business. If you knew somebody at a label, an A&R person or something, you gave them a demo tape. Hopefully you made a good one. They look at that. They say, hey, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you've done some schmoozing, something like that. And next thing you know, they put you out. And if you're lucky, they did enough promotion, you had a hit record. Nowadays, it, it, there's so many different ways, and there's no one way. What's your suggestion with about two minutes left? How can an artist uh, break into this business as well as you know uh, some of the key players that are going to help them? Well, it, it, first to say that you know it, it's good news, bad news. The good news is nowadays with the electronic ability to record anywhere and the ability to release online, uh, anybody and everybody can, uh, you know, get a career of some sort at some level. Maybe not very successful, but at least at some level they can get their, their product and their music out. Uh, that's the good news. That's also the bad news. Anybody can have a career nowadays. Not, you know, so as a result, the competition is so much greater and so much more difficult. And, and the key, I, I don't know that signing with a record company, I don't highly recommend it anymore. Uh, especially since record companies are now making deals that are 360 deals, which uh, for anyone uninitiated means that they take a part of everything, your merchandising, your touring, uh, your television performances, everything, a little bit. Yeah. They take a percentage of everything, and, and that seems to be the most common deal, certainly for younger artists at the time now that aren't established. Um, so I, I don't highly recommend that, especially unless you create leverage. You can, you know, again, it goes back to where's your marching band. By that, where is the wow factor? What do you have? You really need to examine your own 
uh, you know, your own strengths and your weaknesses, and particularly look for what sets you apart. Why are you different? Why are you going to attract anybody's attention? What is unique about you? Lionel Richie had a line when he was guest at my class, you know, uh, just about the time they say you're crazy uh, is the time that you know you're going to be successful. <laughs> and the crazier they say you are, probably the more successful you're going to be. There has to be something about you that's different, special, stands out. Uh, you know, I mean, the big way nowadays to make it, and I've got a client right now on the uh, on the voice, so a lovely lady named India, not a client, she isn't a client, I shouldn't say that's misspoke. She's a former student of mine. Her name is India Carney. She's on the voice. Hey, and, you, can, you know, that's one way to make it. Yeah, I'm sorry for cutting you off here, sir. Changing stage radio show, the remarkable Ken Craig again. We are powered by WS Radio Networks. It's been a great time. Come back this Saturday. We have another show. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Progressive Medical. Hey, this is Heidi Rue, and you know, Progressive Medical Center has literally changed my life and my health, but I'm not the only one. Adele suffered from bone deterioration, bone overgrowth, profound muscle discomfort, physical exhaustion, and mental fog. In fact, the bone deterioration becomes so serious that she had to have back surgery. Well, after the surgery, she still didn't feel well, and so that's when she heard about Progressive Medical Center. Progressive Medical Center discovered that her adrenals weren't working properly, her hormones were out of whack, and the drugs she had been taking were doing more harm than good. Adele came into Progressive Medical Center in a walker, physically and mentally exhausted. But now she's a world traveler. She hikes and walks several miles a day, and it's all thanks to Progressive Medical Center. 770-676-6000. 770-676-6000. Progressive Medical, this is your life, live it well. Take a break from politics. Tune in and learn something. WS Radio shows are worth your time and are filled with tips and advice. Add us to your lunch routine and we'll give you a meal for your mind. Do you want to be a professional coach? Are you in business trying to make a real difference with people you manage or work with? Have you started a coaching practice that isn't quite getting off the ground? Get the skills you need to be a successful coach today with the Coach's Training Program from Accomplishment Coaching. The Coach's Training Program will show you how to help others focus and be more fulfilled. Whether you want to improve your company's bottom line or create a thriving coaching practice, Accomplishment Coaching can give you the distinctions and practices you need to coach others effectively today. Accomplishment Coaching has spent six years developing a cutting-edge coaches training program that will have you ready to coach people professionally in just 12 months, and you don't have to take time off work to do it. To find out more about the Coaches Training Program, just call 1-888-548-6813. That's 1-888-548-6813. Hi, this is Rob Barnett, VinVillage.com, where wine lovers connect. Be sure to tune in weekly to VinVillage Radio for exclusive, in-depth interviews with the who's who in wine and food. 